out there in the comic community world, welcome to the weekly rundown. The rundown this week goes through the week of Wednesday, January 18th, 2012. Uh, first of all, you guys know myself, I'm Chris. Also with me is Mike and Cody. Hello. How y'all doing? And this week in comic books, we're in the third week of January, one week to go, uh, before the first month of 2012 is over. It's been a pretty big month thus far. This is a pretty big week for both Marvel and DC, both hitting at least 20 comic books. Uh, medium to small week when it comes to the independent comics uh, companies, but I'm sure if you put them together, they would equal up to either Marvel or DC's um, amount of comics released. So without wasting any more of your time, uh, let's get right into the comic books this week. And right into the jumping right into the independence, right into Boom Studios, we got Hellraiser Masterpiece uh, Masterpieces number six. Based off of the movie of uh, Hellraiser, if you guys have never seen back in the eighties, that crazy as hell movie with Pinhead and uh, Who you that? Call what Pinhead? was the uh, who you call Pinhead? With uh, what was that other one? The the Jabbery Jaws one. I don't. I've never watched Hellraiser. Oh my God! You need to. If you are a fan of the movie, I'm assuming you guys are gonna love this. Uh, I'm hoping that the comic has a lot of relation to the movie and definitely with the same. Like once again, Pinhead and all those crazy. Oh God. Um, Who you call him Pinhead? <laughs> uh, this is definitely gonna be something to look out for. Next up, we got Planet of the Apes, number 10. Another comic uh, based on a movie. Directly based off of the movie? Uh, I don't know. I don't read Planet of the Apes. I was going to say, is it based off of the first movie, or is it based off of the movie that's like the pre-story before? It could be related yes. to the movie. Either way, I'm assuming, we, we are assuming <laughs> over here at CCC that this is based off of either the movie or the prequel movie that just came out. Yes. All you Planet... All you Planet of the A fans, get your fix with this comic, and it's the 10th issue. Ooh. Next up, we got Steed and Mrs. Peel, number <laughs> one. Um, I'm looking at his cover, and I can't help but laugh. Is, <laughs> is that Frank Sinatra? I don't know. Oh my god, now I... But Grant Morrison writes it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Graham Morrison. <laughs> oh, wait. Based on the hit TV show, The Avengers. There you go. That's where it comes okay. from. <laughs> I thought see, it looked familiar. About the same. Like, you see with the colors in the steed and, you know, with the blue and red, that looks like something from uh, Austin Powers. Just with the funky colors and Frank Sinatra is... <laughs> looks interesting. Yeah, it, it does, does look, look interesting. I don't know. It looks interesting. It looks like a snarky mobster. Uh, we don't even know. Something to check out for, I guess. And that concludes Boom Studios. And jumping right from Boom Studios, we are going straight into Dark Horse. Very small for both uh, for this week. For uh, Dark Horse, we got Conan, The Road of Kings, number 12. Looks like Conan's a little bit chained up in this cover. Looks like he's in, in trouble. In trouble, in jail. Uh, is that a map behind him? Or is uh, it just like a wall or something? It looks, no, it's a map. Oh, okay, it's a, a map. map. To what hmm. is the question? I don't know. Yeah, we don't, uh, we don't know. But, uh, I mean, what was Conan's original saying? Uh, slay all the something. Oh, um, crush your enemies. See bridges before you, and uh, he. Wait. Hear the lamentations, hear the of, the lamentations wait, of the women. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold I on. saw our video clip of how, it on YouTube. How, and I was about to say, have you been and, storing and, something and, in the, and in the remember, attic? And I remember the song from Robot Chicken, What's Best in Life. So that kind oh of. Oh my uh, god. Jeez, I was about to say, dude, are you reading something that I'm not? I'm not. I'm just, I just remember it from You both. just got into comic books and you already know a few things I don't. <laughs> hey, come on. Give me a chance. All right. So that's that with Conan. That's that with Conan. I uh, <laughs> wonder if there's any lamination. Right, we're not even going to get to that. Yeah, let's just move on. Moving right along with the last issue for Dark Horse, Mass Effect Invasion number four, based off of the big freaking hit video game. 
Uh, right in this cover, we see some blue alien lady that I'm sure has a name. Yep. We, uh, we see some guy who reminds me a lot of Sinestro. Oh, I was going to yeah, say General Sinestro, Zod, actually. but okay, yeah, Sinestro works point. too. Oh, General Zod works as well, especially with the dagger. Mm-hmm. Um, we got the Afterlife logo building. I'm assuming that's a building or a tower that's on fire. It's a big fight. Uh, get your fix here, Mass Effect fans. Mass Effect was a very, very good game. Uh, so I'm definitely assuming that the comic book lives up to its name or the video game adaptation. All right, guys, and that's it uh, for Boom and Dark Horse. Now I'm going to pass the torch on to Mike, who's going to take you guys through a walk in the jungle with Dynamite. All right, and thank you, Cody. So now we will go into the uh, issues that came out this month for Dynamite. Ooh. This week, first of all. Yeah, Second of all, the weird thing is, uh, just to note, Dynamite has actually broken away from the other indie companies at the end of Midtown Comics and now has its own personal slot. Something to note if you're uh, ordering on Midtown. It is now underneath DC and not underneath Marvel uh, mixed with all the other indie books anymore. So Dynamite's coming up. Yep, and we're going to start with Kevin Smith's Green Hornet number 21. Uh, wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. Uh, lots of stuff going on here. Uh, looks like he has him in a leg lock, or I don't know what it, it looks like is. He punched him, nothing like a leg lock, per se. Green Hornet's been very huge, especially after the movie, but I heard the movie didn't do so good. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. There's like mixed uh, reactions to that, but yeah. It's very nice. Yeah, it is. All right, next we have Kirby Genesis Dragon's Bane number one. Alex Ross does the cover. Yeah, Alex Ross is a genius. I mean, wow, the cover itself, it, it looks like it's going to be an interesting it, story. It makes me want to buy it. Yeah, it, just the cover itself, guys, is just I might amazing. Buy it. I might actually buy it. It, it, the, I look at this cover and I'm like, I feel bad I didn't buy it. Now I want to actually go and buy it to see what's going on. But yeah, I, it looks like an interesting read for those comic book readers out there. And What are those gypsy rings? The rings? I don't know. No, the wings. Oh, the wings? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to read and find out for ourselves. Or they will as well. Next, we have Lord of the Jungle number one. Oh, I, I did a previous review. Yeah. Oh. I mean... You got Tarzan and... It's actually his parents in the first issue. Yeah, and the monkeys in the background. Apes. Apes. Monkeys, apes, same thing. Um, no, a monkey is small and ape is large. You know the difference when it, they're chasing you. Are you done now? Yes, I'm done. Thank you. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, it looks like an interesting story. And uh, from looking at the movie, Disney's movies, actually, uh, Tarzan, you know, I... Don't, don't base it off of a Disney movie. I'm not basing it off. I'm just saying I know Tarzan a little bit, so yeah. Next is Patricia Briggs Alpha and Omega Cry Wolf Volume 1, Number 4. Mm. Cover looks very... Beautiful cover. Yeah, it has a wolf and the snowy scene with two people walking. Beautiful. It, it does look like an eerie scene, kind of, the way the wolf is looking and stuff like that, but it looks like a great read, and uh, hey. I think it will be interesting. For it's everybody. about wolves? It gets a thumbs up from me. Yeah, Same absolutely. Here. Wolves for the win. And Okay. Next, we have Red Sonja, number 62. Sanja. Oh, sorry. Well, how Sanja. do you pronounce it, Cody? Uh, I believe it's Sanja, unless you are Spanish or whatever, then it's Sonia. Yep, number 62, oh. She-Devil with a Sword. Mm -mm. Wow, Cody's she... favorite comic. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> she looks like she means business and dangerous and that blood, I think. Listen, that's the edge of the once sword. again, Cody's favorite comic. I could not... Listen, if you're going to rewrite uh, uh, Sanja, I was about to say Sonia. Don't don't start from the, the the free comic book day issue. Just don't. Just start where the volume first started or whatever. But uh, I could not get into this. Don't get me wrong. Baby got back though. Mm -hmm. uh, about to go wow wow for you, I guess. Okay, I'm moving along. We got Red Sanja Raven one shot. Hey, another one that Cody might like. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Cody, uh, Red Sanja. <laughs> Is it just me? Does it look like her bra is having a malfunction? I don't know. And I don't... Yeah. The cover art looks nice, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the full moon and the background and the whole thing. Yeah. Looking forward to your review, Cody. Hey. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cody, what's your take on this cover? Uh, the cover is nice, but uh, I'm, I'm sorry. The story was not there for me. Okay. Uh, All right, let's uh, move on now. Okay, next we have Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, Eye of the World, number 19. Looks like something you'd see in the Fable video game. Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, it looks uh, very... Um, old fairy tale-ish. Yeah, like olden times and... Uh, yeah, I guess you know, I'd Dynamite has been doing a lot of work with olden times. Like Red Sanjo has been very big. Um, they're doing the Tarzan book. They've, that's why I think they're moving up a bit. Dynamite's really pushing a lot of good titles and a lot of interesting stories. And it does, and they don't necessarily have to be in modern day times. They're doing olden times, and Dynamite is really. It, they seem to be really pushing the envelope, and it's going in their favor. Yeah, and the artwork itself is classic, so. Yeah. yeah, that it that looks, artwork is That's nice. the cover. Now you don't know if the well, cover is the same on the inside. That's true. And last but not least, from Dynamite, we have Voltron number two. Which is in the future. So right. that kind of just destroys what I just said, but whatever. I know, and uh, after uh, reading uh, Voltron number one, actually... Oh, it was so good. Yeah, Voltron number two, I am definitely looking forward to looking into that. It's Alex and Ross's cover again. Alex Ross is working a lot with Dynamite. Well, Alex Ross, and yeah. All right, and that's all for me with Dynamite, so now I'll pass it on to my brother Chris, and he will be doing IDW. All right, guys, uh, not that many from IDW this week, only about five. First off, we got Cobra number nine, which is part three to the Cobra Command series. There are, in my opinion, a lot of G.I. Joe titles, but... Um, I guess, uh, I don't know really what to say about it because I haven't been, I don't read G.I. Joe. The cover looks like there's a bunch of action in it. It looks like something's going on in Cobra. Um, I don't know, I like the cover art. It's more of a painted on art instead of a drawn on. Um, I guess if you're reading G.I. Joe, you'll know what's going on. Moving along, a more sensual cover, Danger Girl Revolver, number one. Wow. Danger Girl just actually finished a miniseries with Army of Darkness. Uh, is this like Charlie's Angels? It looks like it. Yeah, you know, you kind of. You know, it kind of looks yeah. like it, but I, I don't know per se. But it actually, the cover is in. Yeah, even the way Danger Girl said it, it reminds me a lot of Charlie's Angels. Well, yeah. I, I have no idea. I don't really know much about Danger Girl, so I really can't say much. Well, dangerous. About, so watch oh, yeah. out. <laughs> okay, moving forward, we have Ghostbusters. Number five, yes. the next story arc begins here. Um, the first story arc concluded. That was all based off of what happened right after the movies. Hopefully now that the series has begun, uh, they'll move away from the movies and build off an entity all their own. And uh, this cover, it, you know they're definitely moving forward, but it's, it's kind of like that mix between funny and kind of creepy at the same time. Oh, Zombie geez. horse. Yes. Moving along, I have no idea about this comic. Memorial number two. Beautiful cover. I like it. It looks very interesting. Uh, I like yeah, the, the background picture with the window and all, but I have no idea about this comic at all. But it looks really, really nice. The cover, at least. It has a big storyline, it looks like, as well. Oh, yeah. Maybe. We'll see. And the last comic from IDW this week is... Star Trek number five, and in parentheses they say it's Star Trek IDW. Um, they're using covers from the first movie, I'm guessing. Uh, this is based off of, and this is a prediction because of the people that are on the cover, I believe this is based off of uh, James Kirk's uh, time on mm -hmm. Star Trek. I, I think so, because it looks uh, that way that they've been trying to do that. I mean, this is news I've heard of, uh, of him. More of so. him than instead of Jean-Luc Picard? More along the lines, but they're trying to get more into it with other characters. But, yeah, I guess you could say it that way. Interesting. interesting. Yes, yeah, interesting indeed. Okay, so that's it for IDW. We are now going to Cody with his very, very interesting 
um, image run. Thank you, Chris. And just like how Chris said, we are jumping right into image. Guys, this has been a very, very interesting week for Image, especially because the first comic we're going to talk about is... the. We cannot show you guys this. This is censored at its finest. Bomb Queen, uh, number five. Or volume five, I'm assuming it is? Uh, it's the... Volume 7, I think it is, actually. Volume 7? Oh, jeez, yeah. I'm reading Roman numerals wrong. Yeah, I'm it's sorry. A, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I was having trouble with it, too. Uh, apparently, she's been around for seven volumes. I guess they're calling them volumes. Gosh stories. darn. Seventh volume, Queen's World, number two. We can, like... You can Google this and see what Bond Queen is all about. I mean... We have integrity. We have integrity, so we don't want to really smut up our rundown. So, it, even if the image doesn't look so bad, I'd rather we all agree, all three of us, that putting a censored picture up instead of the actual pictures for Bomb Queen is a safe route. Yeah, but like before, you could just look it up and Google it or yeah. anything else. Yeah, look it up, Google it, trust us. It's it's Mega Man go, gone in a whole different direction. Oh, yeah. All right, so... Moving off of that, we got Chew, uh, Chew number 23. Now, I've been hearing a lot about Chew, but I'm, I don't know what it is about. But Apparently, it's a detective that can eat stuff, like meat and stuff, and he could get, like past events from eating it. That's why he eats people yeah, or something look at like the that. Bat. It's Even not, the bat. He huh? can eat the bat and know where the bat's been or something, something like that. God, I mean, what is that, a zombie or...? I don't know, but as I said in the last one where we showed censored, this definitely reaches a halfway censored. Yeah, almost. cover's definitely interesting. Image has been known for their freaking... You know what, their, their stories, their interesting <laughs> stories. Yeah, very, very weird. Jumping right off the chew, we got Hack and Slash number 12. Is that a, sp <laughs> a is that spider gun? I guess it is, and it looks like Conan's with them. Oh my god. It, Conan <laughs> wearing a, a scarecrow oh. mask or something? I don't know. What is this, Halloween or Is that a dog down there? I <laughs> is oh it my a face? <laughs> well, it's very happy. Well, uh, I mean, when you say hack and slash, I'm thinking of something completely different. This just... This hack and is slash like, is at your brain, kind of. It looks like a very randomish uh, Halloween-like... What cover? Yeah, okay kind of expression. That's all I could say. Very true. Moving right along, we got a comic with a very interesting name. Morning Glories, number 15. Written by Nick Spencer, Joe Isma, and Rodin... Eh, oh my god, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that Esquijo. last name. Esquijo. It's... it's uh, I don't know. Esquijo. Now, I know nothing about Morning Glories, but... What is it? Is it like the, bre the, the Breakfast Club or I something don't, like that? So, it, it, it's based around kids in high school, I believe. A lot of people are raving about this title, actually, Cody. You'd be surprised. Um, I don't know. It, it's like no superpowers, no nothing. It's like just drama, team drama, teen stuff like mystery and whatnot. I honestly never got interested enough to actually give it a shot. So, yeah, people have been asking me to. I just, money and everything else, so I'd, I'd never give it a shot, to be completely honest. Dang, they could have made it like, I don't know, Silent Hill or something. But, hey, hey morning glory, so... If it's getting the rave, it's got to be at least worth checking out. Mm. Next up, we got Near Death number five. Is this? Uh, now, at first I was going to say it's the Punisher. But I was with, just about to say that. It's like it's the Punisher, and if that car was black, it would look... What was the car that talked? Oh, my God. Knight Rider. I mean, Knight Rider. It lo Ugh, I was about to call this comic Knight Rider. If that car was black... You guys got anything on this? Cause I don't, no. I don't know anything about near yeah, that. Not what a she said thing. With the Punisher, but just without the skull. Not a thing. Shirt, so I guess we could just say it looks good by the cover. If you're interested in, see, in 
this story through the cover, even though it's an issue five. Check it out. Wow. Yeah, well, maybe worth uh, the money. Next up, we got Profit, number 21. Uh, spaceman wrapped around cords and stuff? I mean, Profit. Is it just me, or are there weird, like, covers this week from Image? Image is known for their weird things, but, I mean, shucks. <laughs> Seeing all these different comics is just like, you just want to pick them up just to see what the heck these things are about. Moving right along, guys, we have, for the final comic for Image, Xenoholics number four. <laughs> just... Chris, you were interested in this. I actually was. It's about people who are... Um addicted to aliens and uh, xenoholics just replace xeno with alcoholics but we'll take alcoholics and recall re replace alcohol with xeno xeno is alien that's what these people are they're obsessed with aliens yeah there's the men in white i'm not joking with you, um, Do you does anybody sense a ripoff here somewhere men in black oh wow mike very good you get a cookie so mm -hmm. um it's funny it's it has its moments. It's in its fourth issue. I'll trade paperback the first story and see yeah, before this, I buy it. This cover could be definitely opposite much. Oh, right you should. You, you, this is the first cover you've seen. I've seen the other three. Other three. I don't know. I don't want to know. Possibly. This looks trippy as all heck. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, anyways, guys, that is the rundown for Image. I'm going to toss it right now, anyways. I'm going to toss it to you guys right back over to Michael, who's going to take you uh, leaping right into the New 52 with Marvel. All right, thank you, Cody. And okay. Hey. And this time it's in alphabetical order, guys, so you don't have to worry. And there won't be possibly any weird pitches. But yeah, let's jump into Marvel now. Starting off with Amazing Spider Man number 678. Wow. Yeah, apparently Spider-Man uh, has a prop like a prophecy, like he sees in the future that the world's gonna end and it's his fault and he has to try to prevent it. Very interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to reading that one. Yeah. The crossover with Daredevil, I guess, is over in the Daredevil book. Yeah, I'm gonna read that too and check it out. Next, we have Avengers number twenty-one and Storms on the cover and it's front and center, yeah. still against the Dark Avengers. Yeah, you got Iron Man, Captain America, I mean... It's a sweet cover. Yeah, it really looks nice. It really looks like lots of stuff's going to go down here. Next is Avenging Spider-Man number three. Basically another word for Spider-Man team up. Okay. Yeah, now, this villain, he so reminds me of Doomsday. I mean, just the, way the they look of Yeah, him. a little bit. I mean... Agreed. I mean, I don't know if they're going to have, like... What they did with Superman, the death or something. I mean, no, I'm not sure. Think, yeah. But, yeah, Cody, what's your take on this? I'm interested to see where this is going to go. I just can't wait for my Spider-Man and Spider-Woman team up. I'm interested in that the most. Alright. Might not have to wait too long. Might not. And speaking of Spider-Man, we have a crossover comic of uh, Daredevil number 8. With nice cover. Yeah, it really does look nice. And uh, it has, like I said before, crossover with... Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 677 from last week. Yes. And uh, I'm going to look into this comic book and uh, see for myself uh, what it is. So, yeah. Next is Deadpool Max 2, number <laughs> 4. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm busy. Come back when I'm not sitting on the pooper. Yeah, if you guys know Deadpool, yeah. we have Deadpool for I you. definitely agree with Phil, uh, the Captain Cummings, when he says the covers are definitely out there. Yeah, and uh, bull holes everywhere. And then Deadpool's like, do you mind? I'm trying to read. But, yeah. Anyway, moving away from that picture, next we have Defenders Tournament of Heroes number one. A lot of Marvel characters I notice on the cover. Yeah, I've even noticed the Incredible Hulk there. The Iron Man and the Human Torch. No Iron Fist. Spider yeah. Woman. Lots of superheroes and lots of uh, stuff going on. So. Hey, there's Angel. Yeah. 
So if you guys know any of these superheroes and want to check them out, check out this uh, comic book. For yeah, I have no week. idea about this one. Next is Fear Itself, Fearless Number 7, featuring The Thing from the FF. Apparently. And I don't know why he's over... Who, who's that woman? Valkyrie. Valkyrie, thank you. I was trying to remember the name. So it uh, looks like there's going to be some uh, twists and turns here. And Does she uh, leap into battle screaming like some opera? <laughs> I don't no. think so. Oh, God. Is that the Mala? Uh, the Mala, God, how do you pronounce that hammer? The Mala? Majora? No. That's one no. of the, the hammers from Fear. Oh, okay. All right. Looks interesting. Yes, it does. Next, we got Generation Hope number 15. Oh, look at the back of the cover. The Phoenix uh, Force. Yep. And Hope's eye glowing. Oh, I wonder who Phoenix is going to be. Given away it should have been Rachel. It should have been Jean Gray. It should have been. But that's what we think. Uh, and Sebastian going? Shaw in the background, and he knows it's her. That's why. No wonder why he joined Generation Hope. He knew that... Hope was going to be... But it does look like an amazing cover. I will give it that. Yes, so, very nice cover. Absolutely. Should be racial. Whatever. Should be cheap. Next should be... Oh, actually, the next uh, comic is... He messed me up. Ghost Rider number eight. A book that's on its way out. Yeah, and it looks like... Uh, is that a sword? Yeah, it's a sword. Wow, that's a nice nope, sword. Nope, nope, it's not a sword. It's her little... fork thingy. I was about to say that's a her... Yeah, I don't the new Ghost Rider is a she. Oh, wow. The heck? That's I all I can know. say. Just let's... just remember, it is ending. <laughs> okay, thank thankfully. Okay, next we have Halo Full of Reach Invasion number one. And Cortana's on the cover. Yeah, wow. They How still... many more comics can they make for Halo uh, with Reach? Well, involved? then again, that Halo uh, anniversary came out in the Halo 4. Yeah, but I mean, how many how many miniseries can you make out of Reach? Well, Halo's a very popular title, so any of you Halo fans want to take a look at this, by all means, you should uh, check, check out the out. third part of The Fall of Reach. And that too. What about you, Cody? Um, uh, I'm not a fan of Master Chief, and it does look like... Come on, now, that's Master Chief, and that's Cortana, so it's just like, uh, the story wouldn't interest me. And I, th I know, honesty, I think the books were better. I'd, uh, were better. I'd say go check out, like, Ghost of Onyx and stuff like that. Yeah, that's absolutely. Nice books. All right, next is Invincible Iron Man, number 512. Robots everywhere, and Iron Man all by himself. But the last time Iron Man got hit in the chest and he couldn't breathe anymore because his arc reactor went out. Oh, that's bad. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see how he comes back from that one. Well, we'll see in this issue of Invincible Iron Man. The classic all against one. Yep. Next is John Carter of Princess of Mars number five. Romantic cover. Romance is in the air on Mars. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Well, different lives happen in different planets. Yeah, so it looks interesting. Artwork is very interesting. Yeah, it's actually very interesting. Trippy. And uh, we have another one of uh, John Carter of Mars, World of Mars, number four. I wonder if they're linked. That green alien uh, back there... Um, looks angry. Yeah, but he has like more than uh, two arms, it seems. From the bottom and Very all that. good, Michael. You can count. Uh, yes, I can. But all in all, it looks great. Uh, Artwork's a little better in this one, in my opinion. A little bit more... Um, defiant. Yeah. Yeah, defiant. Defiant. Very, very defiant. Okay, next is Legion of Monsters number four. <laughs> exactly what you said. Oh, this it looks is a like a mess. It all works. Wait, what were you going to say, Cody? Oh, uh, if this is Legion of Monsters, why is there a human female in, like, the front of the, all the monsters? I don't know. Maybe it's just... Put Maybe there. she's their leader. Could be, because humans... Next is Moon Knight number nine. It looks like he's pulling off a little bit of Superman, you know, of how he rips uh, the shirt and all that, but... 
and like he looks like he an reminds me of that guy from uh, Watchmen. The blue guy. Oh my god, I know who you're talking about. Shoot. I don't know, <laughs> but it looks really nice. The cover itself looks very great. I just like the azure blue that they put in that. Like the shading is so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very well designed. I have to admit that for that. Next is New Mutants number thirty-six. Cyclops aside, don't read it. Oh my God! If it's dealing with Cyclops, then we don't read it. We but don't it look, read the it. The cover looks. Yeah. Action pack. Should Are I those guys leaping into battle with guitars? Hey, rock on, yeah. Yeah, actually they are. <laughs> what the That's heck? the serious kind of rock band, my friends. <laughs> that hey, is. Hey, you're look, rocking it hard. If they, yeah, if they could rock it, then let's rock and roll. All right, moving on now. We have Six Guns, number four. Uh, a kid. I don't really... Shooting a gun. I don't know much about this story either. It's nice artwork. I have no idea about the story, though. Yeah, so... Alright, next is Superior number 7. Uh, it looks like, uh... Is that... Uh, Captain Marvel? I don't know who it is. It looks like him, but... No, that's Superior. Oh, okay. Well, it the way it looks, you know. Mm. It looks that like is... it's going to be something else. It looks like a ram. Like a that that creature in there looks like a a ram or something. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Next, Thunderbolts number one hundred and sixty-nine. And what a cover! I like the white splash. Yeah, I actually like it too. It's like old heroes. Is that cloak going and into it. That's cloak and dagger. That's olden times. They look. It looks like like back in the uh, night times. Because that's cloak and that's dagger. Yeah, you're right. Wow. You know what this cover reminds me of? Uh, look, if you look at it really closely, X Men. I was thinking Teen Titans with Raven. Well, you know what? That too. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of ways you can look at this cover. Whichever way works for both of you, then yeah, check it out. Next is Ultimate Comics Spider Man number six. Eh. Ah. Uh, no. I really don't know much to say about. It. I mean, new Spidey. Miles Morales, take it or leave it. Yes. That's really all that can be said for the Ultimate Spider-Man line. Moving along now, we have Uncanny X-Force number 20. New story arc. New story arc indeed, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a uh, great story and lots of stuff that's going to be happening. So, with Phantom X. Yeah, with Phantom X and uh, everybody else involved, so I'd check it out. Go X-Force. Yep. Next is Uncanny X-Men number five. And wow, that woman's going to give it to that. That's uh, Psylocke. Yeah, Psylocke. Big Another story. damn issue. <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, there's going to be lots of uh, fatalities, mm. more or less, that's going to be happening. So, yeah, Uncanny X-Men number five, everyone. Too that's much that. Psylocke. Eh, that's fine. Next is Venom number 12. Finally fighting against Jack O'Lantern. Oh, this is... Oh, God, it's Flash Thompson. Oh, God. But, yeah, I, I knew it was going to come to this where Venom and Jack O'Lantern were going to have their all-out fight. Uh, Go Venom. Yeah, I really hope Venom does win. Even though it's Flash Thompson, which I prefer Eddie Brock, uh, any day. Cover looks good. But yeah, the cover looks good. Uh, looks like it's going to be in a city... Las Vegas? Yeah. Yeah, Las Vegas. Vegas, thank you, yeah. Looks very nice, and yeah. And last but not least, concluding Marvel for this week is Wolverine, Punisher, and Ghost Rider, official index to the Marvel Universe number six. Featuring Wolverine from Wolverine number 171, the Punisher from Punisher 20, and Ghost Rider from Ghost Rider Danny Catch, Catch number one. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be... I mean, 3 and 1, you got three great uh, heroes from Marvel. I'm confused and about the index. What is it exactly? A compilation of three comic books or something? I think so. It might be a lead-up to also other things. And plus, you know, Punisher Max being the canceled title. You know, that could be it too. Mm -hmm. 
And that's all for Marvel for this week. So now we'll go to my brother Chris, where he will conclude this week with DC Comics. All right, we're jumping into the new 52 books. First up is Batman number five, Greg Capello, The Court of Owls versus Batman. And it don't look like Batman's doing too well uh, in this issue. Um, really, there's not much to say about this. It's Batman versus The Court of Owls. And uh, so far, they've been pulling, like, I don't want to say tricks on him, but they've been really, um, they've been one-upping him a lot. And uh, Bruce just found out recently that the, the uh, Council of Owls have been around for a lot longer than um, he originally thought. They've been around for many, many years, dating back to his grandfather's time, basically. Ah, so they pretty much, so that's how, I guess that's how they're one-upping him, because they know a lot of his tricks and whatnot. Yeah, they, yeah, no, they don't know his tricks. Probably they've been watching him, though. And also to note, this comic is coming in combo pack now. If you guys are interested in those comics with the digit free digital downloads, only a dollar more. Something oh, yeah. Know. Sweet deal. Definitely. Moving along into another Batman book, Batman Odyssey, number four. Robin's in trouble. It's up to Bruce to save him. Uh... Not much I really can say. I was interested in the original Batman Odyssey. This new volume, I'm not so much. Yes, Mike? Is it just me, or does it seem Robin sometimes gets in some kind of trouble? The Robins have a tendency to do that, except Dick. Dick was always a better Robin. No, no, I know that, but I'm just saying, like, just this one in general. Yeah. It, it's I an guess. observation. Something to know, which Robin is that? No idea. I think it's Tim Drake, possibly. Mm. Moving along to Birds of Prey number five. Notice that all the comics this week, guys, unless it's a mini series, are number five. Uh, new cover art. I CGI. Like it. Possibly it looks it. Uh, I like it. It's very nice. Um, that's really all I can say. It's very nice. It's very interesting. It's a change from the cover art that we've been seeing right along. I'm hoping this isn't the variant because I did get most of these covers from Midtown Comics. It seems like a variant, but there was no variant for Birds of Prey, I believe, this week. I don't know. Looks nice. Regardless, this cover looks very interesting. It's amazing. Hey. Yeah. Girls can kick ass, too. Oh, oh yeah, course. and they've been doing so thus far. I'm glad I actually jumped into this series. Moving along to Blue Beetle number five. Looks like somebody dies, and we don't know if it's on Blue Beetle's hands or not, but uh, looks like it's going to be Blue Beetle changing. I, I don't know. Anybody have anything? Wise, maybe. Anybody have anything on Blue Beetle? It definitely looks like something. If I had the money, I would definitely be checking out, because even though Blue Beetle, when it started, it got some slack, uh... Like, I've heard it as some teenage drama and whatnot. It definitely looks like it's really starting to pick up. Mm. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, we'll see. Moving along to another book that um, we don't read, but yeah, it's Captain Adam number five. Uh, is he I have to turn my head sideways for this one. Yeah, me too. I don't know what's attacking, whether it be an animal, a dragon, or whatnot. But it looks, looks like, like a dragon true. mixed up as a wolf. Yeah. I don't know, but it looks like he's got some uh, fight on his hands. Moving right along, Catwoman number five. Originally, I was going to drop this book, but I ended up grabbing it anyway. It looks interesting. It's Catwoman versus a new villainess, so to speak, and it looks like she's not doing too well wow. at the start of this fight. Uh, from the cover alone, you could tell that. From the last issue, she was thrown like hundreds and hundreds of miles into the air, so... You know, you got it. What goes up? Must come down. Must come down. Oh, yeah. Moving along to DC Universe Presents number five. Still with uh, Dead Man. I believe. Dead Man's in this? Yeah, DC Universe Presents one through five so far. I believe the story is changing to another character soon. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Okay, wait Dead a minute. Man has been in three comic books thus far. He's been in this one, Hawk and Dove. Which is being canceled. Don't remind me. Okay. And Justice League Dark. Right. I think they're making Dead Man a very, very popular. Uh, they're trying to bring person. him out into light a bit, I think, and that's yeah. pretty okay. Well, in Boston opinion. Brand. You know that. Oh yeah. Moving along. Uh, mind you guys, this is connected to Vertigo. DC and Vertigo are from the same company. 
Diablo number two. Now, Cody, you mentioned there that being a Diablo game. I don't know if this is connected to the Diablo game or not. Um, however, the cover looks interesting, in my opinion. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like it at first, just because of that guy in the background, but because we, we seem to have a, a spellcaster and a person... Uh, With a looks big like, sword. Yeah, it looks like some form of like witchcraft and everything. I saw uh, the sword. It might be... I don't know if it's a part of the game, but if it's anywhere within continuity of the game, it might be a pickup. Yeah. Moving along, another one from Vertigo. End of... No, not Vertigo, sorry. End of Nations number three. I believe it's not Vertigo. I don't know. Uh, plane go down, man fly out of plane, other man hold on. That's really all I can say about this issue. Why you no parachute? I don't know. Well, we're going to have to find out what happens. If you guys are interested in this series, you'll be checking it out. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on in this series. Neither do I. Moving along, this I know is from Vertigo. Uh, Fables, number 113. The cover looks really, really nice. Um, I've heard a lot of good things from about Fable. Um, unfortunately, 113 issues in, I only have the first two volumes, which is like 10 issues. Altogether, or 12 issues? Yeah, I'm, I'm out about 101 issues. Is that a cappuccino? It looks like it. The cover is In very these trippy. days? In these days. The cover's trippy. I'm stealing your words there, Cody. <laughs> very trippy. Oh my God. But I like it. Moving along, back into regular DCU number fives. Green Lantern Corps number five. Guy Gardner versus uh, the... Um, Things that have been fighting Green Lantern Corps for a while now. I hate the Guardians, and the Guardians have been... Oh, don't remind you know, me. I know there's going to be a big event in the Green Lantern series somewhere along the lines. I believe in Green Lantern 5 there was a kind of teaser towards another big event. I don't know Or something why. that's going to happen in the Green Lantern books. I just don't know why they just can't get them. I mean, they're, they're a little... Just... Uh, they're the good guys, though. you got to remember know. that. I know. So anyway, moving along. This is also Vertigo. Hellblazers, number 287. I have no idea about Hellblazers. That's an epic cover, though, in my opinion. And an epic pose, too. That mm -hmm. man. Oh, Very guy. nice artwork on the cover. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Moving along. Legion of Superheroes, number 5. A new story arc begins. And it looks very interesting. Um, yeah, that's really all I could say. I have no idea what the new story arc is going to be. I've been enjoying it for a bit, uh, Legion of Superheroes, but I'll tell you guys, if you haven't been reading Legion of Superheroes right along or have an idea of what's been going on, yeah, you're going to be lost with this series. Moving along, uh, we are now in one of Cody's favorite books, Nightwing, number five. This cover, though, does not look so cool for Nightwing. looks like he's getting... Uh, eaten? Ripped apart. Eaten. Eaten is a good word. By some type of a demon. Uh, creepy. Very, very creepy. Much. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I'm sorry, but for Nightwing fans out there, it's just, I didn't agree with the previous issues. I mean, I have never in my days seen Gotham have, like, neon lights. It, Gotham looks like Miami and Nightwing. It's just like, the, I've never seen Gotham look well, like right that. Well, now, right now, Nightwing is traveling with the circus. Oh. Whoops. I believe anyway. That's the just the, that's what I've been getting anyway. But anyway, uh, I've been enjoying Nightwing. I like Nightwing. I like Dick Grayson. So if you're interested, you'll be picking it up. Next, we have Red Hood and the Outlaws, number five. Oh, Starfire looks to be knocked out, and Arsenal is there, and. You know, the only thing I don't like about what they when they relaunched uh, Arsenal, I, I don't mind they changed his name back. I don't mind that they have him as kind of like a fugitive, but could have gone without the tattoos. I don't know why. I just yeah, don't like the tattoos. But with Starfire knocked out, uh, Cody, this must be upsetting you. No, unfortunately, it is because it's a knockout and not a kill. But <laughs> wow, <laughs> where are they in Alaska? I don't know where they're at right now, but I do it's know that I don't place. care about... The people on this cover are the two um, people that I don't care about. The only person that matters to me in Red Hood and the Outlaws is the Red Hood. 
Moving along, Supergirl number five. It seems the first arc is over now. Supergirl is facing her first super villainess, and uh, I don't know. I dropped the series a bit ago. Um, so yeah, Supergirl versus new super villain. Take cover back. looks nice. Cover is very nice, though. I will say that. Yeah. Hmm. Okie dokie. Moving forward, Thunder Agents number three miniseries. Um. What's going on here? I have no idea. It looks very <laughs> pink. And apparently I, this guy doesn't like pink. Is that brain? I don't know. I hate how these trippy... You notice how every trippy cover we mention always has the colors of green, pink, uh, blue, like these neon colors. It's like... Yeah, I've noticed heck? that. I've noticed that, and that's creepy. Okay, moving along. This is more for the kids here, guys. Tiny Titans, number 48. Cutesy title. Cutesy artwork. Uh, if you have kids that are interested in looking at comics, this definitely looks like something uh, that I don't know. I don't read it, so I can't tell you for sure, but it looks like something that kids would enjoy reading. Yeah, some for uh, parents out there. Note this. If you're, if you're uh, going to get some for your kids, if they're interested in comics... Uh, provided the the their age and whatnot, pick this up. Definitely. Now remember, though, there are other issues that are more for adults, like the one we're going to now. Up next is Wonder Woman number five. I was very iffy on this title, but if anything, this cover actually gets me more interested in reading further. Uh, what's Wonder Woman facing, and why is she facing it, and why is she holding Triton's um thing? Trident. Trident. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't know. Weapon, that's for sure. Where's the Is king of the kraken? sea? Is that a kraken? Looks like it, so if that's the case, though, where's the king of the sea? Where's uh, they call Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, where is he? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And finally this week, Young Justice number 12, based off of the TV series. Uh, for those of you who pine and miss the old DCU just a little bit, um, basically this is where you can get your fill of it with the black shirt, Superboy. Uh, I would be getting this, if it, but it's all based off of the, car, the TV series. So even though it's like the old DCU, it still has its differences. It's more along the lines of the Warner Brothers DCU, and it looks like they're facing Clayface, actually, in this issue. Do you guys notice anything with, uh, what's her name? Oh, God, Martian Girl or something? Down on the bottom? Why does she have three hands? Yeah, that is an interesting question. Why does she have three hands? I don't oh, remember. Oh, somebody had an artist boo-boo. Yeah, it's oh. like... And that's de you know that's definitely not like you know how they do the animation like they're swinging their arms or something like that because yeah, it would have been the uh, the blue transitioning thing. But then again, she's a shapeshifter, so maybe Maybe she's she more three hand arms. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. Mm. Interesting. Also, to note from DC this week, originally uh, Justice League number five was supposed to be released, and DC did make the announcement that they were not going to be late with any of their comics. However. Uh, the comic was done, I believe, from what I'm reading in the articles, there was a printing error, or some, it has to be a printing error, because they have at least the first seven comics uh, drawn up already. Uh, so, instead of coming out this week, Justice League number 5 is slated for next week on the 25th. So, uh, for those of you who are saying, Chris, you missed Justice League number 5, no. Uh, Justice League number 5 is not being released. It's coming out a week late. And I don't find anything wrong with that. You know, Marvel's released late books. Other companies have released late books. Just because DC said they would try their best not to release a late book, people, it's just one week. Don't complain. It's all right. You know, it's going to happen. You knew it was going to happen. It just happened a lot sooner than we all thought. And that's that. And this is coming from somebody who complains about the new DCU all the time. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. I have the right. It's you called do, freedom right? of you speech. Do. You do. I'm not saying you don't. And that concludes the week of the 18th of January, 2011. One more week to go, and that... Huh? You said 2011, 2012. 12, yes, thank you, Mike, 2012. 
I'm still stuck on 2011 mode. Yeah, it happens. Oh, yeah. So I hope this helped you guys out with the rundown of comics this week. Uh, like I said, it was a pretty big week for Marvel and DC. A very small week for most independent companies with no more, I believe, Image or which one had the most? I uh, think uh, IDW, actually. Uh, actually, Dynamite. Dynamite had eight. IDW followed right behind with seven. Uh... No, Image followed behind with 7, IDW 5, Dark Horse 2, Boom Studios 3, uh, Marvel with 24, and DC with 20. So Marvel beat out everybody with four extra books this week. So guys, enjoy your comic books this week. We'll be back next Tuesday with another comic rundown, the final one of January 2012. And uh, keep reading, enjoy, take care, and we'll see you soon. Alright, later guys. Take care. Bye.